Hello everyone, I'm Morton G here and welcome to another iRacing video. And for this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a few interesting things from the patch notes and also take a look at the season four preliminary schedule. And I'll have links down below for both of those. And starting off with the patch notes and unfortunately, to most of us anyway, rain has not yet been added as the developers continue to grind away on it. So maybe next season. But as far as what is newly added this season, First off, we have one new vehicle, the introduction of the Porsche Mission R, which is the first electric car added to the service. I'll be giving it a quick review later on this week, so keep an eye out for that video. For the preliminary schedule, this will run in a D-Class fixed race that will run every odd two hours on the hour. So like 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., etc. Secondly are three new courses. We got a dirt oval Lucas Oil Speedway located in Missouri. Then we got Motorsports Arena Oceanleben, a German road course with four configurations. Hopefully I got the pronunciation down on that. Then we have Rudenskogen Motor Center, a Norwegian road course, which will be included in the base game at no extra charge. And hopefully I nailed that one too. and a laser scan update to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Indy Oval. And if you do recall, a road configuration was already done mid season three. Next, we have artwork updates to the Arca Menards Chevrolet Impala in the Lotus 79, both of which will require new skins if you use custom liveries for those cars. Another big change rolling out is what they are dubbing as the new energy based damage system update. This will affect all cars with the new damage model they have been rolling out past few seasons. Mainly, it seems this will allow bending and breaking to occur, which will further allow for parts to break more slowly over time due to the buildup of prolonged small impacts. This should lead to less brittle braking behavior. Next up is a slew of AI racing updates for additional cars and track configurations. They're a bit too numerous to go through here, but you can check that out in the patch notes. Then for those running bass shakers, they have done extensive rewriting of the LFE, low frequency effect system. And from there, let's get into a few vehicle updates. Just beyond the iRacing setup and implementation of that damage model updates, here are a few items I'd like to highlight. For the touring cars, class balance improvements have been made. I can't wait to break that down for week one's BOP tier list video, so make sure you subscribe to see that video next week. Additionally, they have updated aerodynamic models based on brand new real world info. Entire compound parameters for all cars have been updated. So look out for the TCR cars to drive up maybe a little bit different this season. And in particular for both Hondas, a brake pedal motion ratio reduction was made to improve brake modulation. Moving on to the GT3s, a slew of updates across all vehicles as well. In addition to class balance improvements, drafting parameters were updated, the tire wear rate rebalanced, caster adjustment range has been reduced. Not a car junkie per se, but it's a part that attaches to the wheel and can affect steering from what I read. Also, pit stop tire change duration has been reduced. I'm not sure how much of an impact that will have on daily races, but probably more of a thing affecting endurance races. And for individual cars, BMW, Porsche, and McLaren GT3 cars, suspension spring range has been increased. And for the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo, the peak brake pedal force has been reduced. And the Porsche 911R GT3 has also had its downforce increase slightly. And as you can see, a lot of changes here for the GT3 class. So I'm really looking forward to how that's going to affect the BOP tier list for next week. Stay tuned for that. Now, other individual car changes of note. The Mazda MX-5 Cup car, the tire parameters have been updated. The Porsche Cup car, the 992, is seeing a lot of big updates as well. As it had its tire parameters updated, aerodynamic model updated, drafting power reduced, brake pad authority and temperature sensitivity updated slightly, updates to the dampers and ARBs, rear ride height limits updated, and lastly, adjustment to the shift lamp RPM range. And the one major update related to open wheel cars, the USF 2000 has added spider gear friction to its differential locking. From what I could find, spider gear is part of the car's gear set, allowing its rear wheels to turn at different speeds when necessary without affecting movement of the car. So possibly a buff to the USF 2000's rear stability. You car junkies, let me know in the comments down below. 
And one thing I'll add for you dirt sprint racers out there, they seem to have made adjustments to making wall riding less advantageous, which I heard was something being exploited quite a bit. Now I did see from a key bombs video testing this, and it seems it's more the car getting damaged when attempting multiple times than the friction of the wall itself doing anything like the notes suggest. So keep an eye out for further testing and adjustments to that. Now for the second part of this video, let's take a quick look at the preliminary schedule they released. Now, not too many changes overall, but two things did catch my eye. One I mentioned earlier was the schedule for the new Porsche Mission R being a D-Class fixed series. The other being the Dallara Formula IR has moved down to C-Class. And races will occur for this one every even two hours on the hour. Now, I've only test driven this car and I found it to be similar to the F1 car in speed and grip. Now, however, being a non real life car made specifically for iRacing a year or two ago, never really took off, seems to have faded even more with the introduction of the Mercedes W12. Well, moving it to see spark more interest, we shall see. Okay, so beyond those two noteworthy items, I thought I'd take a look at some other interesting stats from the schedule that some of you might find useful for planning track purchases this season. And first, we're going to take a look at the most used oval courses. This will include the Arca series, Trucks, Xfinity, NASCAR Legends, and NASCAR Next Gen. And I'm not separating it out by fixed and open series, combining it as one series for simplicity. And as you can see from my graphic here, all these courses are used in four out of the five series. We got Bristol, Las Vegas, Martinsville, Talladega, Texas, and Homestead, Miami. And my next one here, we're taking a look at the most used road courses overall. This is out of 30 daily series. Again, combining any fixed and open series, which utilizes the same courses. And number one on the list is Road America at 18 uses, Watkins Glen at 17, Fuji at 16, Road Atlanta at 14, and Spa at 13. And furthermore, I thought I'd break down the road courses by class. And in D-Class, which includes 11 series, again, combining any open and fixed. In the top three here, Daytona, Mount Panorama, and Road Atlanta are being used six out of 11 series. Then the next three at four, five, and six, Road America, Red Bull Ring, and Watkins Glen are all at five of 11. Now looking at C-Class, which consists of 12 series, we got Fuji Spa and Watkins Glen all at eight of 12, Bonds at seven of 12, and Road America at seven of 12. And coming in at class B, which consists of five series, we got Fuji, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and Road America, all used four of five of the series. And lastly, I have some stats here on the amount of pay tracks required for each series, broken down by open wheel, tin tops, and prototypes in oval racing. So there you have it folks, a breakdown for you to prepare for season four. Do let me know in the comments what updates you're excited about. And most certainly let me know in the comments if you found my schedule breakdown at all helpful to gauge whether it's worth me continuing in future seasons of this. And please go check out one of my other most recent videos up in the right hand corner and i do stream some of my longer official races in league racing here on youtube and various other games on my second youtube channel links below for that as well as my other social and until next time good luck on your start of season four and safe driving